And good evening. Welcome to our midweek service. Thanks for joining us. Boy, what a great day of weather we've had. A little bit of that feel of summer this afternoon got extremely warm. And uh, I'm sure summer will be here before we we're ready for it. But I trust you've had a good day, a good week so far. Thank you for joining us for our midweek service. And uh, we certainly uh, appreciate that. I trust it's a help to you. If you want to get your Bibles, you can be finding Philippians chapter 2. We'll be looking there uh, tonight when we get ready for our study time. Before we do that, let me give you some prayer requests within our church family and extended family for you to be praying for as well as our missionaries of the week. And uh, let's make note of those. First of all, Brother Ray Hudgens, continue to pray for him as he recovers from his hip surgery and in injury and surgery keep him in your prayers brother Eddie Rogers uh, brother Eddie continues to have some new developments coming up a lot of things going on there if you would keep him in your prayers and for Karen uh, I always when I pray with her I always ask God to give, give her a special stamina and uh, so but do be praying for Eddie he is in the hospital and uh, continue to keep him in your prayers brother Arlen Smith Brother Arlen has some ongoing things that they're working through and some things with his, uh, with his cancer and that and some treatment decisions that will have to be made. Keep him in your prayers. For uh, Chuck and Katie Lindsay, uh, Miss Katie is very low. Uh, continue to pray for the family. Pray for grace during this time. But uh, keep her in your prayers as well as a family. I know that they would appreciate it. Uh, Judy Camp passed away. That's uh, some extended family. Uh, that's family uh, of the uh, Callahans and the Holcombs and the Simmons. Uh, they had the surgery today. Her husband, of course, but Steve's pastor. Pray for that family that they will just God's grace will be real to them. Uh, you'll see Deborah done there. Deborah went today for some scans. Um, and she'll have a follow-up doctor's appointment on Friday. If you'd please keep her in your prayers. Had a chance to talk to her, uh, I believe it was on yesterday, and have, some, have a word of prayer with her, but do be praying for Deborah Dunn. You also see there Robert and Sherry Wiley. That is the son-in-law and daughter of the Overbees. Pray for them during this time. And then you see Iris Bailey. That's Karen Leger's mom. Uh, keep her in your prayers. Uh, as she is dealing with some ongoing health issues. So those are some I know we have on our prayer list. If there are others you want to make sure we include, if you'll please call Angie, let her know in the office, and we'll get those to you uh, each week. Our missionaries of the week are uh, William and Mavis Newman, Brother Bill Newman and his wife, serving there in Jamaica. And keep them in your prayers uh, as they serve the Lord at, uh, I want to say at Central Independent Baptist Church, uh, but keep them in your prayers and their work that is going on uh, there. And so, in fact, it's interesting as I was kind of looking toward the trivia for this, I, I was, they were one of the things that I didn't choose to use, but it said that it is one of the most churched uh, places, countries in the world. And there's a church for every, I forget how many square miles, there's a church on the island. But then as I kept reading, I ran somewhere else that for every church, there are two rum bars uh, for every church. So it's not only a one with a lot of churches, it's also one with a lot of bars and a lot of drinking of rum. So pray for them in the ministry there in Jamaica. Let's have a word of prayer. Then after that, we'll give you our missions trivia, and we will get ready to get into our, uh, have a couple of announcements. We'll get into our Bible study. Father, we do pray tonight as we come to you, as we begin our Bible study, we also lift up those within our church family, those extended family of our church members that you would provide for each of these needs. Lord, we've got some that are in the hospital, some who are recovering from injuries and surgery. Lord, we have some on our prayer list who uh, are battling ongoing issues and some have important decisions to make regarding treatments. We also pray for those who are dealing with losses of loved ones. Uh, pray for the families that you'll give a special grace and strength uh, during this time that you would be especially close to them. We do pray for the Newmans and the work they're doing there in Jamaica. Ask that you'll give them fruit for their labor, uh, continue to meet their needs, and Lord, through it all, may, uh, may, may Christ be made known 
in that area of the world. And we'll thank you for it. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we've done before, we like to give you a little trivia to go along with our uh, area that our missionary serves. In this particular case, it's Jamaica trivia, and it's a two-part question. So we encourage you, as you get the opportunity and you do this, uh, text me your answer and let me know what you um, what you th- what you believe or what you find the answer to be here's a two-part trivia Jamaica is divided into how many parishes that's kind of how that region is it's got three counties but there are a certain number of parishes that cover the country how many parishes are there in Jamaica and what parish does brother Bill Newman do his work in So that's kind of the two-part trivia. How many parishes and what parish does he serve in? See if you can get that answer. Send it to me, and we'll uh, get the opportunity to have uh, see who can get the right answers for that. In the way of announcements, let me just remind you, May is family month here at Temple. have a lot of things going on. And uh, throughout the course of the month, on May the 9th, of course, is Mother's Day. We'll have a tribute to mothers, to moms. And also on that day, the appointed quartet will be with us. We'll have some good Southern gospel music that I know you'll enjoy. A special treat for moms. We'll be doing a combined life group at 930 where we'll be serving moms and the family's breakfast. We'll have some men that'll be helping. So ladies, you don't have to do any work. Just come and enjoy breakfast. You do it enough for us. And so we'll have that. On the, uh, on the 16th, we have uh, the Ministry of Marriage. We'll be talking some about marriage on the 23rd. It's Graduate Sunday. And in conjunction with that day, we'll be preaching and speaking on principles of parenting. And then May the 30th, we'll be talking about leaving a godly legacy. That's Memorial Day weekend, and so uh, we'll be dealing with that. Throughout the month, we'll be having some special things on Sunday evenings, uh, kind of our faith and family month. And so on Sunday evenings, we'll be having some activities in conjunction with our evening services to um, just uh, give us the opportunity to fellowship together. On May, May the 2nd, on Sunday evening, there'll be a time over, we'll be meeting over in the old sanctuary We'll be having uh, a devotion, be speaking over there. Then we'll have the, uh, some, some activities, some food, some fellowship. I want you to plan on being part of that. Now, one of the things that's been noted and was in the bulletin Sunday, uh, come see the human piñata. Now, let me go ahead and let you know, you're not the piñata. And uh, it doesn't require that you have to be mobile and be able to run around. The piñata part will be a little more for the kids, but we'll have something for all age groups on the 16th there'll be a special 2 p.m. service so on Sunday we'll be saying more about that on Sunday as you're here but there'll be a 2 p.m. service on Sunday afternoon and then following that we're going to do a front yard fellowship at the Rushing's house at my house we want to invite you to come bring a lawn chair and we'll be telling you some things about that for any of you that may not know where I live or don't want to drive up that direction we'll be making transportation you can ride the van up if you'd like to on that Sunday evening but on the 16th on the 23rd we're going to have family talent night we want to see what talents you have whether you can whether you can sing or juggle or uh, throw an axe or whatever you can do that you might have talent in your family We want to hear it, want to be a part of it, we'll look forward. And then on the 30th, that evening, we'll be having our church cookout. And in conjunction with our church cookout, we'll have some games and different things. And right now, I'm placing a challenge to anybody. But the Lord and I are challenging all comers in horseshoes. We're challenging all comers. If you think you can out-throw us, come prove it. It's horseshoe tossing Sunday night. My wife and I will challenge all comers, all couples, anyone want to challenge us in cornhole. Uh, So we'll look for that. In fact, my wife just became aware of that just now that I'm planning to do that. So, but uh, we'll look forward to a good evening. That'll be on May the 30th. So a lot of things there. And I trust you'll make plans to be a part. Let's look quickly and get into our scripture tonight. In Philippians chapter 2, we'll be looking at verses 12 and 13. As we get ready to look at that, let me just remind you of the context When you come to verses 12 and 13, you've just come off the great passage about the Lord Jesus Christ where Paul has admonished the church, 
let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus and he talks about that humble servant minded mind then he talks about how that because that now God's highly exalted him but you have that that mind set that he wants the people of God the church to take on now when you come to verse 12 look at these two verses verses 12 and 13 he says this wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure now as we begin looking at this verse and we're going to particularly look at that phrase where he says work out your own salvation we're going to be looking at that phrase tonight and we're looking at some other passages with it I think it's real important to take note first of all this verse is not talking about working for your salvation it's not talking about works salvation now it's obvious for a couple of reasons number one first of all Paul is writing to Christians where he starts his verse by saying my beloved wherefore my beloved He's talking to believers. You've always obeyed in my presence and my absence. He's writing to this church. He's writing to those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ. So number one, he's not talking about work salvation because he's talking to those who have already received salvation. The second thing is, it can't be that he is talking about working to earn your salvation because that would contradict other passages of Scripture. There are other passages. We don't have time to look at all of them, but one of the uh, probably the classic example is Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, where it says this, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now listen to this, not of works, lest any man should boast. So he in this in this passage he says, Look, you're saved by grace by faith you're saved by grace through faith that's very important that not of yourself is a gift not of works so Paul can't be talking about works salvation here in Philippians because it would contradict that now it is important when you go on to verse 10 notice what he says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So he does say, look, we, once we are saved, God saved us for a purpose that we might carry out these good works, but we're not saved by these good works. But when you're back in Philippians, he tells them to work out your own salvation. So look at that phrase, work out your own salvation. You might circle that. You can see in your notes. He says, work out your own salvation. And then in the next verse, he says, it is God that worketh in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, what does he mean when he says, work out your own salvation? Uh, I was reading uh, one of my favorite of the Greek, I, I can say Greek scholars, Weiss was talking about this. And one of the things he says about this, he says in his defining that work out phrase that Paul uses there, he says it's, it's the idea of solving a math equation to the ultimate conclusion. Okay? So it's the idea of solving a math equation to the ultimate conclusion. In other words, getting it completely done. Here would be an example of that. If we can kind of go to that next slide. One more here's an example here's a math problem maybe you've done this in school and especially when you started learning about variables a plus 5 equals 10 plus 3 minus 3 plus 8 now look at that equation right there now some of you right now are going great I've logged in for church you want me to do math look at the equation if you ever find yourself in this typically what they want you to do is they want you to solve it to completion and many times they want you to show your work the first step that you might do if you're working on this, and you could do it in any order, but for simplicity, you'll see how I'm going to do it. You do all the math on the right-hand side. 10 plus 3 equals 13 minus 3 equals 10 plus 8 equals 18. So you could come to a point where you'd say A plus 5 equals 18. But if you stopped right there, 
you haven't worked the equation to completion. To actually solve the equation, you would isolate the variable, is what it's called, and you would find that A equals 13. A equals 13. That's the idea that you have in this work out your own salvation. So that's kind of the concept. Now, let me show you a second one, and I'm going to take you to a passage of Scripture over in 2 Peter chapter 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter gives about adding to your faith. So if you were to look at a math equation, let's give you this one, for example. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Okay? You see on the left side of the screen? You could do that in your head. 1 plus 2 equals 3 plus 3 equals 6 plus 4 equals what, class? 10. Right? That's solving the math equation. Well, there's also a math equation in Peter, in 2 Peter chapter 1. Listen at this math equation, this addition problem. He says, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. So he starts with faith. But he says, add to your faith virtue. So it's faith plus virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. So it's plus knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance so it's plus temperance and to temperance patience so it's plus patience and to patience godliness so it's plus godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness plus brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity now you see all of these again he says add to your faith you got faith plus virtue, plus knowledge, plus temperance, plus patience, plus godliness, plus brotherly kindness, plus charity. Now here the question would be, class, what does that equal? What does that equal? Well, if you keep reading, it would tell you that what that equals is that equals a fruitful Christian life. For he goes on to say, if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, again, you're building upon that faith that brought you into the family of God, but now you're adding to that. That's a little bit of the concept. Hey, work out your own salvation. So that's the concept that he's given. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. And, and, and I, I mentioned this before. Salvation has three aspects. In the past, I've been saved from the penalty of sin. My eternity is secure. In the present, I'm being saved from the power of sin. My life is growing. That's what this adding, this working out your salvation has to deal with. And one day I'll be saved from the presence of sin when ultimately my glorification is completed. I'm like Christ. I'm in God's presence. That's what we get. We're dealing with this working out your salvation has to do with what I'm supposed to be doing right now in the present. And right now in the present, what I'm working toward is Christ-likeness. And remember, he said that work out your salvation. It's like a, a math equation s taking it to its ultimate conclusion. There are some other verses that kind of give us that same concept. Let me give you a couple very quickly tonight in the time we have. Go to Colossians. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, just right back, just ahead. We were in uh, Philippians a moment ago. Back in Ephesians and chapter 4. And he's, he's writing here, and as Paul is also writing in this passage, he's talking about the putting off and the putting on. And notice what he says. He says, but ye have not so learned in Christ. Now, he's been talking in some of these prior things about some of the, uh, some of the sins of the flesh that, and the way that the, the unsaved live. He said, but you've not learned this in Christ. If so be that you have heard him and have been taught of him as the truth is in Jesus. Now, here you go. Here's your math equation again, that working out your salvation. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. You see that put off? That's subtraction. That's the subtracting part of the equation. And that ye put on 
the new man. That's the plus. That's the positive part of the math equation. There's minus, there's plus. There's subtraction, there's addition. He gives you here. And then he says, which after God is created, now look at this, in righteousness and true holiness. What are we working toward? We are working toward Christ-likeness, living a righteous life, living a life of true holiness. There are a lot of parallels between Ephesians and Colossians. In Colossians, Paul goes to a few more details. If you go back to Colossians chapter 3, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then you got Colossians chapter 3. If you go there, he gives you a few more details here. And I just want to kind of quickly move through this. We could spend a lot more time with it. But beginning in verse 8, and he's led up to this by talking about mortifying those things in our lives that aren't pleasing to God. You come to verse 8, he says, But now ye also, now here's that phrase, put off, that's your subtraction, put off all these. Now look what he gives you. If you're going to work out your salvation, these are things that you must subtract from your life. And he gives anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication, out of your mouth he gives you those things and the different ones lie not one to another seeing that ye have put off the old man and his deeds okay those are the things you put off again work out your salvation it's the idea of working a math a a math equation to its completion you do some subtraction you're also going to do some addition He goes on to say, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So he's going to give you those. Now go down to verse 12 and notice what he says. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Now here's my addition. These are the things. This is what I'm trying to work out in my life. Bowels of mercies, kindness humbleness of mind meekness long suffering forbearing one another forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel it's any even now look at this even as Christ forgave you so also do ye and above all these put on charity which is the bond of perfectness you see that perfectness completing that workout your goal of completing the equation subtraction getting rid of those things addition adding those things let me give you one other then I want to give you a couple things in conclusion and application as we conclude when you go to Galatians chapter 5 if you want to just turn quickly Galatians chapter 5 we won't take time to read it but at the end of the chapter he gives two contrasting concepts he talks about the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit when he gives the works of the flesh those are the negative things that should not be that should be removed from our life and he lists those adultery and fornication and uncleanness and lasciviousness then he follows that up with but the fruit of the spirit he gives the negative These are the things that as we work out our salvation, these are the things that we should take away. But then he gives us the fruit of the Spirit, those things that should be uh, produced from our life. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Okay? Now, I'm hitting a lot of this in a hurry, but I want you to take note. When the Apostle Paul says in Philippians 2, work out your salvation the idea there is like a math equation that you're working to its completion in my own life what that looks like of working out my salvation is my working through that process where I'm seeing the things that are not like Christ being eliminated and the things that make me more like Christ being added into my life where once there was hatred and anger, now there's grace, there's, there's humility. Where once there was uh, untruthfulness, now there is truthfulness. Now go back to the verse in Philippians and notice 
what he says. Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salva- your own salvation. Your, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But then he goes on to say in that same passage, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God that worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Now, when we look at that, I think there are three great applications for us to understand. Number one, the continuing work of salvation is a personal responsibility. It is a personal responsibility. Can can I tell you this? Whether you manifest grace or harshness isn't somebody else's fault it's your responsibility to develop that grace the growth of your faith or the failure of your faith it's not someone else's fault it's our responsibility number one the continuing work of salvation this in the presence I've been saved from the penalty of sin I'm I should be growing and overcoming the power of sin in my life. That is a personal responsibility. Number two, the second thing, though, is the work is accomplished through Holy Spirit enabling. You see, I don't have to do it in my own might. I do have to take a personal responsibility in it. But God gave us his spirit that he might enable us to grow in those areas of our life. It's through his enabling, not through simply my sense of willpower that allows me to do that. Work out your salvation through fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. You see, first, I must take personal responsibility. Can I tell you this? There's no excuse for me as a Christian not to be moving toward Christ-likeness. I have a personal responsibility, but I have a Holy Spirit enabling. Here's the third truth I want you to take from this passage. The goal, as I'm working out my salvation, the goal is to remove the things that make me less like Christ and demonstrate the things that make me look more like Christ. That goes into every area of life. In your home. Hey men, we're to be a model of Christ in the home, Ephesians chapter 5. Therefore, in any situation within the home, in my dealing with my wife, in my dealing with my children, my goal should be to manifest a Christ-likeness in those situations. And as I work out my salvation, it it should become more evident of the work of grace that is taking place. When we work, when, when we deal with people at church, when you deal with people at work, when situations get tense, when, when nerves are frayed, my goal should be that I remove those, re- those reactions that make me look less like Christ and I begin to demonstrate those things that make me look more like Christ. That's what this verse is telling us. The Christian life, it's like a math equation where I am doing subtraction and I am doing addition. And as I work through that equation, I take on more and more a resemblance of my Lord. Can I challenge you through the remainder of this week? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But do so mindful, it is God that worketh in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Hey, be praying for the services on Sunday. Come planning to worship. Come planning to give of your best to the master. And let's look forward to that. Be praying for us. Have a good day. We love you. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Father, bless now your word. Write it upon our hearts. 
through it, may we work out our own salvation. May we take that personal responsibility, but may we do so leaning on you and the power and enabling of your spirit. And may we take more and more a family resemblance of our precious Lord and Savior. We ask this in Jesus' name.